Hello, and welcome to That Eurovision Podcast, Eurovision with a Slice of Life. Uh, my name is Rory, and I'm not doing too bad today. It's uh, a Thursday now, and I'm just kind of relaxing, and I'm getting ready for the weekend, because I'm going on a little mini break, so I'm like really looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, so uh, joining me. Uh, Jazzy, uh, not done too much today, just been a nice, quiet, relaxing day, and I'm really excited to talk about the topic that we're going to talk about today. Hi, it's Rosie, and I've literally just gotten out of a meeting that overran by an hour and a half, so I am stressed. (laughs) So I'm hoping that Rory and Jazzy's chill vibes will, like, penetrate through the internet to me. I'm I'm sending good vibes. Good vibes. Thank you. Sending vibes. 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 (laughs) 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 Tim here. Yep, just finished work half an hour ago. Uh, but to be honest, I'm more looking forward to the weekend because I get to go to my second home, which is IKEA. How sad! Aww, <laughs> and like and buy some more and buy some more Swedish chocolate, which is the main reason I'm going there, other than buying furniture. But yes, it's a very good day, and I am very excited about this episode because it's very very close to my heart. Oh, well, it makes sense, wasn't it? Because it's all played such an important part in our life. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. Well, um, mostly as well, I am just very jealous at the fact you're getting to go to Ikea because there's only one Ikea in Ireland and it's in Dublin and it's four hours away. And I'm like, ah! (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm very jealous, very jealous. But um, yeah, so in this episode, we're going to be talking about the most recent contest to take place there would have been 2020 had there not have been a big pandemic going on but alas here we are so uh, in this episode we're going to be talking about 2019 as a contest mm-hmm. and for this we actually have a fantastic guest we have uh, a good friend of the podcast andrew hello hello how are you doing i'm good very... can't complain too much it's still very early here <laughs> Very early. I ho- again, I really do hope that we haven't like completely dragged you up in the depth of night or anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, it's all good. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So in 2019, the contest was held in Tel Aviv, Israel, after Netta had won with Toy in Lisbon, and uh, 41 countries took part. It was supposed to be 42, but uh, if you'd listened to the Ukraine episode, which you can listen to on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, um, you find out that unfortunately didn't it turn out to be the case. So instead, we only had 41 countries taking part and uh, it was won by the Netherlands and Duncan Lawrence with Arcade. So um, just to kind of like kick things off, I guess, is um, like, how do you think 2019 sort of compares with some of the more recent contests of the time so like 2016 2018 because a lot of cut like uh, a lot of fans see those sort of uh, um, in the same ranks well i kind of agree with them but to get to where 2019 was let's just say it was not easy for the love of god the moment netta won it was just a question of Will they host it? Won't they host it? Will they host it? Won't they host it? Drama here, drama there, (laughs) you know, scared here. Are we going to have to move the contest somewhere? (laughs) Everybody panic, everybody ensues, expensive tickets. I mean, despite the small... (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Crimea is Ukraine. Uh You know, it, it was just like left, right and center throughout. And... You know, despite the fact that it was such a smaller, smaller venue, including the fact that it was also used for Fire Saga, it actually ended up quite well, and it's got a good production value. It took a long time to get there, but, you know, they do say good things come to those who ate, and I think Israel managed to fulfill that with what they had at the time, in my personal perspective. Uh, my personal opinion is it wasn't the best contest that was hosted in recent years but it wasn't the worst either um i'd probably rank it just somewhere in the middle um in terms of like the hosting in terms of the show um yeah it like it wasn't as good as 2016 however i do feel it was better than 2018 and 2017 in terms of how it presented itself and how 
like the show ran and the interval acts and keeping the audience engaged because like I feel with 2017 it felt very like it just didn't feel very well presented and didn't feel very well thought out while 2018 was very very well thought out but it sometimes it felt like the interval acts dragged and didn't really have very much to do with Eurovision at times um however 2019 kind of Although, again, the interval acts drag, sometimes did drag and sometimes felt unnecessary. I will move on to that later. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. um, and obviously, there were points where like, I feel like the voting was like an hour in the final. I don't know if it actually was, but it felt like that um, in Euroclub in Tel Aviv. So, yeah. So it's like not as good as 2016. I do rank it higher than 2018 and 2017 in terms of production value. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I mean, I have it like one step below like 2016, 2018. But I mean, I think overall, I think it was the intervals that dragged the most for me. Just, I mean, it was just a lot of it that felt kind of unnecess- unnecessary. Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Some of them were just like, so not worth it and so not needed. Four hours. <laughs> it's been four hours. Get over it. <laughs> Can I just point out to our listeners? On that day, I have been in Tel Aviv for two weeks. I was very sleep deprived, <laughs> like waking up early and going to bed like 3 a.m. the next day. And you're only having like, like four or five hours sleep. And also with the fact that the show did not start till 10 p.m. And yeah, for the grand final, did not start till 10 p.m. And finished about 2, 2.30. And then got to your club at 3 and finished about 7 a.m. And I was awake at 9 a.m. the day before. That, that's commitment. <laughs> that is commitment. Yeah. I, I just went to, to your club while I was in Tel Aviv. I didn't go to any of the shows. However, like, but it just felt like I was like getting home at six six a.m. and my flight back was at like one p.m. the next day. God, I don't know how you did it. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) and I was like, and and also because of the fact that Israel's so strict, I was like, okay, have to be there at the airport three hours before my flight because you have to go through so much security. You're just like, ah, like. The problem was, though, it wasn't, like, for, for me anyway, it wasn't getting into Israel, it was getting back out and getting back into the UK, and I don't know if that is anything to do with Brexit, oh. but I really questioned why I wanted to go back to the UK, like, after <laughs> nine days, and I don't know if that is to do with Brexit, or... That's just the way Israel does their thing. Like, because I went, b- before 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 I went for Eurovision, I did a quick trip to Tel Aviv, and they asked me the same questions. Why were you here? What did you do? Where did you stay? <laughs> but yeah, a lot of questions. <laughs> Very uncomfortable questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and glad to know that I got through it fine with no problems, because I'm here right now. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Mm. I can't say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, um, I really love 2019. And I'm kind of just going by the quality of songs alone. There are so many fantastic songs from that year that whatever I think about the hosting and everything else and the fact that things sort of dragged on forever, I don't care. I love so much of that year. Um, it's not my favourite of the decade. Um, that still goes to 2014 but it's close there are some absolute classics and there are so many things that i absolutely love about the contest that are exemplified this year uh so yeah i i really love it as a year and i could go back and listen to a lot of the songs again and again Yeah, I think, like, 2019, it was definitely, like, another year where, like, the song quality was, like, through the roof. I think 2019 was quite possibly one of the best years in terms of sort of national selection quality of songs and the, Mm -hmm. like, chosen ones because there were so many songs in 2019's, like, national selections that I would have happily had 
like in any other year I would have loved. Um, it was just a shame that so many of them had to come in at the one time. But uh, it was, I think it was a very strong year. I, I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit chaotic to say the least. <laughs> But, um, <laughs> oh I, God! Yeah, it it was chaotic, but I think you know, um, Khan did manage to put on a very strong show, and I think you know there was a lot that was going for it, and I do kind of wish that maybe some parts of it were shaved down because my God, four hours! You know, when you're trying to host a Eurovision party with like about twenty to thirty drunk young adults, I think it just doesn't help very many people. Um, <laughs> because when it just goes on for like an hour and a half just for like waiting for a certain interval act to come on and they're just like where is it and I'm like I don't know <laughs> but, um, but yeah. and they got they, there was even doubts of whether or not that certain interval act was going to happen because I was in Tel Aviv and we were just like initially got confirmed and then what now because they weren't officially confirmed until the week itself and then when the week itself came, I was like, all day, one day, she's already rehearsing there. Mm. And it took them a two days before the show. It's like, yep, she's definitely appearing. Bit late <laughs> in the day, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but she was rehearsing. That's how it turned out in the end, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, can't say she didn't have it coming. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so just kind of looking towards like the kind of interval acts um i think the main one that we need to bring up now that we've sort of mentioned her is uh, madonna and mm -hmm. uh you know having like the hype build up for her for so long so there was a hint that she possibly could go but then the fact that it would require like a million dollars in order just to sort of allow her to perform mm -hmm. and then you know, having to get an Israeli billionaire just to pay for it and then having that come out as the finished product. I mean, Andrew, like, as, like, an American, like, how did you feel about, like, your country being represented by Madonna in that way? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the performance itself I wasn't a, a fan of. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, it was definitely weird to see, like, I guess it being such a big European thing to have you know, when the American pop royalty just throw themselves in. Yeah, it was it was a, kind of a strange thing because, like, we'd had that before, hadn't we? We'd had it with Justin Timberlake in 2016. Yeah. But I feel like that was most... Most of that was to kind of promote the fact that Trolls, like, the, the film was coming out. So it was more of a benefit as in, like, okay, I get promotion for this film and you get to have me at a singing competition. So... Like, it's not like we hadn't had it before, but if you were to compare Justin Timberlake and Madonna, who would you prefer, like, out of the two? Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> He's bringing sexy back. Yeah. Because <laughs> the thing is, I wouldn't have mind Madonna, but the only thing was, we knew that she kind of lip-synced the second track, and... Had she maybe just maybe put something consistent on, aka just use lip sync for both of it, then maybe I wouldn't have minded it. But then I was just like, I was just looking at the first performance and I was in, because I got a ticket for the final through Eurovision Diaries and I was in the arena. I was just like, what on earth is this? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, you could have just used auto tune, and then when she uploaded the actual performance on her Vivo account, and I was like, "Who are you gonna fool here?" When the original is literally on YouTube already, yeah, <laughs> and we were just like, "Who are you gonna fool here? We've already seen the performance, Madonna. We know how it sounds. <laughs> we know it's awful." <laughs> but I am gonna give props to that sound engineer who was able to do that. <laughs> and made it look so flawless. Give that guy a raise. <laughs> yeah, they get they they deserve a Grammy. A Grammy, should they say? Yeah. Uh, thing is, I actually really liked Future. I really did not like Like a Prayer. I really did not like that like version of it at all. It was a complete mess. But I actually really like like Future as a song. Mm -hmm. And like as yeah. soon as it came on, I actually up I actually put it on my Spotify playlist, and I do consistently listen to it. But. There what was... really, what really pissed me off is like you know you could have I mean as much as I loved that it was a thirtieth anniversary of like a prayer, you could have you could have sung hung up, 
Just because of the fact that it's Eurovision related. Somewhat. A little bit. Yeah, but still, like, Eurovision, like, there's the connection at least, and we know that connection. And, you know, Tel Aviv is known for a party. Bring something upbeat, but apparently that was not what she was going for. No. She was it. She was there to make a statement, and that was it. <laughs> and I can't listen to Like a Prayer without just going in my head, this song is about blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that either. I was I today years to old. You there. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rosie's just shattered an entire illusion of an, of this whole of this whole woman now. <laughs> Can we just cancel Madonna now? <laughs> I mean, I think she's already cancelled. You <laughs> killed him. <laughs> but um, yeah. So overall, Madonna, hmm, a little bit problematic. <laughs> a little bit. But to be fair, I do think it was it. The, the the way that she managed to kind of bring that little bit of controversy at the end with all of the people getting up, all the dancers getting up and one of them had the, having the Israeli flag and the other one having the Palestinian flag. I think that was... She, we knew that there was something that was going to happen, but we just didn't know what. And I think that was how it was going to play out. I think when it happened, I think I was like, oh my God, what is this? I, like We were all like, oh my God, I can't believe she did that. Little did we know what was coming. <laughs> 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 but um so yeah so looking at the sort of 2019 songs um who would be your third second and first who wants to kick it off i'll kick it off okay. um my third place is the lovely super group which is kano and spirit in the sky it's mostly just because of the fact that all th- all three of them represented something and that blended quite well. Same with the song. And I also like the fact that they've really embraced the Eurovision experience. I was with them on five pre, on the, like about, I think it was four or five pre party, something like that. And they were really professional, you know, despite the hectic schedule. And yeah. the fact that they're still popular now with the Eurovision fans is quite amazing. And also stream Octa for Clear Skin. My third place is Luca Hani. She got me. Um, I do want to give an hon- honourable mention to Kano and Spirit in the Sky. That is my fourth. I've gone between the two a lot. Yeah. But I've got, based on the live performance and based on the show, I would go for Luca just because I do personally think it is the best live, live performance and package in the whole of the 2019 final. And I like I was in Euro Club, and there was just like a buzz when Luca performed, and I thought at some points he could have won the whole thing. Just you know, when you just get a scent, like a feeling or a scent of like the atmosphere changing. Yeah, that's kind of what I got in Euro Club when he performed, and I fell in love with it from there because I just think it was like just one of those special moments for me in Tel Aviv. I will be very quick for my third place because, okay, so my second and third place switch, so I'm just going to be sort of whatever, whichever's the quickest. And my third place is also Kano with Spirit in the Sky because I think it's a joy and I adore it. That's it. <laughs> Little nutshell. <laughs> Interest, yeah. Bite size. I have to go with uh, Zero Gravity. Like, just the staging alone. Like, from the... Um, from my straight decides, I was just mind blown by the whole thing. And that was the one I had going into it. Mm. I think as well, like, because obviously they'd like hyped the staging up so much since like the national selection. So like we had no idea what it was like going to be like in terms of the actual staging. And then when rehearsal started coming out and we saw really what she was doing, that was amazing. Um... But yeah, my my third place, <laughs> back to kind of craziness, uh, it's Poland with Pali Shear by Tulia. I am a big, big fan of that kind of ethnic 
uh, sort of white voice singing style and uh, makes sense why I really like Solove now this year. Um, and it was cruelly robbed of its place in the final just because of a sort of a jury mistake. But do you know what? <laughs> I can live with it because it was all right. I, when it came down to like the last qualifier and who knew who, what it was going to be, I thought, OK, I'm willing to sacrifice Poland if Slovenia manages to get in. And then Slovenia managed to get in. So it's all right. I have a brain to pick with you about that. <laughs> I really hated Slovenia that year. I really hated it. Okay. It was, I don't know how it qualified. I really don't. But yeah, so uh, second place. Oh God, you love my second place. And all I'm going to say is, girl. girl. Yeah. Yeah. And... <laughs> I really like this one because I've seen what North Macedonia had gone through for the past eight years. And I've just about had enough. And I think MRT was in the same position. And I'm really quite happy that they sent Tamara just because of the fact that she knows what kind of artist she is. And she kind of knew what she wanted or what song she wanted to send to Tel Aviv. And it worked quite well for her. I mean, despite the fact that she did not promote this, she ended up doing so well and ended up winning the freaking jury vote. And I really love the fact that from day one, I actually believed in her when nobody did. Even when they said, nope, she's not going to qualify. And look who got announced first. And if you look at the ESC Extra YouTube channel and you find the reaction video, you'll see how I completely lost it. <laughs> So I saw it there recently and I was like, yeah, that's exactly how I'd have imagined it. <laughs> My second place, and again, it kind of comes from a place of supporting them right from the beginning of their Eurovision journey, like from the moment they were picked, and it's Mickey and Lavenda. Um, it was my number one through the whole pre-party season. Obviously something changed, but... Even, like, I get that some people don't like the staging, but personally, it was colourful and I enjoyed it. And it's just one of those songs that just makes me happy. And the, when Mickey performs it, I just feel, like, I like a song that just, like, makes me feel joyful. And, again, it's just a song that brings, like, great memories because every time it came on in Euroclub, like, it was just my song. And oh. so much. Oh, but Lavender the thing is, though, deserve top ten. Mm -hmm. The yeah. thing is with Lavenda, like whenever it came on, you just hear everyone singing along, don't you? Yeah. Like, like even even afterwards, you were just like, "Oh my god, everyone is lip syncing to this. This might actually." Every time we keep saying it, like, this could be Spain's year where they actually get out of the bottom five and it never ends up happening. But then we always end up with the bot that we always love. Yeah. It's a shame, though, because, like, Although, Mickey deserves so much better. <laughs> there was an improvement with the tally vote. Too bad it came um, at the expense of the jury, though. <laughs> Dang. Ugh. So my second place has actually already been mentioned, and like I said beforehand, it my second and third are pretty much equal, so I was just going by what was fastest to talk about. Um, but my second place is Zero Gravity by Kate Miller-Heidke. Um, again, it's beautiful. I love the story behind it. Um, and the way that she smiles at the end when she's just finished is possibly the most heart-melting thing I've ever seen in my life. And I really like opera. <laughs> I, um, when I was younger, I trained sort of semi-professionally in theatre and opera singing. Um, I used to sing at like, I used to sing at like weddings and stuff um, as like a young child slash early teenager. And so I've always had a love for that sort of music. So yeah, mm -hmm. it makes me happy. Uh, I had uh, France uh, belong at two. I mean, it's just, the song is that, like this is the song that grew me the most in the um, Eurovision season. Just by the time we got to Tel Aviv, I, I was just in love with it, and still I am. Like it's it just I just get goosebumps every time I, I listen to it. See, I I never really got the hype with um, with Bilal. See, my I had I had so many other favorites in Destination Eurovision, but 
I mean, I was, I mean, I was happy for him, you know, like, because obviously, like the like the symbolism that he had in uh, in his performance, you know, like obviously with like with the deaf performer, and then obviously someone who was sort of overweight. I think you know, in itself, I you know, breaking boundaries, and I think that's something that's really really nice and respected. But um, yeah, my second place, it was my first place for so long until um recently and then i've only kind of only just started to kind of get back into listening to it again it's romania esther peony on a sunday um i really <coughs> i really preferred it before the revamp and then the revamp happened and then i was a bit like Ugh. but um i don't know i don't really understand how people didn't like this as much but then again the Ooh. whole reason why it got selected was a whole big controversy within itself so i think we should probably save that for a romania episode <laughs> let's just say um a certain other singer should have really took the stage in tel aviv and if you follow me on twitter you know who that is Oh, oh, who could that possibly be? <laughs> and also, I will never forgive a certain Eurovision winner for not giving it any points. Mm, is there going to be beef happening now? <laughs> I mean, luckily enough, I met them a couple of weeks later and there was. So I was able to hold my temper. <laughs> Just about. Just about. Just about. <laughs> uh, yeah, so shall we talk about our winners? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. And all I will say about my winner is... Ah, oh, all I know, loving you is a losing game. Of course it's going to be Arcade. Like, I mean, I know as much as I love Tomorrow with my heart, it Duncan hooked me in within the first listen. And it my perception of it winning never changed throughout despite me going through the parties and everything, and it went okay. And look at it now, a year later, he's done an EP, and hopefully we'll get an album before the contest in 2021, where he has to give up the trophy as the longest reigning winner ever. Take it but, and run! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Duncan... I mean, it's got, what he deserves. Yeah. Mm. Duncan did a good job on representing the Netherlands, and he deserves that crown with all his might, and I can't wait what the future will hold for him. Oh, okay. Um, my winner is, but I'm not going to sing it because I cannot speak Icelandic. Hattery <laughs> by Hattery. Um, just, it's so different, and just, it is one of those. It like it drew me in from the very first performance, and I was just like in love. Like I said, I, I had a real battle of the wills in 2019 between this and the vendor. So it took me a while to make it my first place because I really, like, I really didn't want to dethrone the vendor. Um, but I feel like out of, like, any season, like, these are probably two, like, my top two are, like, it's probably the year when my top two were the closest. Mm -hmm. But they're so polarising. <laughs> yeah, they're I literally think, like I so different. I, like I think I like <laughs> it like that because it's like, how do you make a choice? <laughs> That's like apples and Between... oranges, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you know, like the oh, wow, I and the feel song to so me is like captivating. And oh, what were you going to say to Rosie? I was saying that I feel so original here because every single one of my answers has been said by someone else and my number one is also actually <laughs> <laughs> It just shows you've all got taste. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I completely agree with with what Jazzy said. And I mean that song was kind of made for me in that I'm also a kinky lefty who hates capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> So, of course, I was going to take to it. And to be fair, I wouldn't have ever said previously that I would be into sort of Icelandic EBM techno music. <laughs> when I say that 2019 expresses so many of the reasons why I love the contest, it is again about there being music in there that I would never have said that I would be interested in. And yet still completely falling in love with it. And... 
Um, I mean, I've followed Hattery since the contest. I've seen them live. I should have seen them live again, but <laughs> Corona happened. Uh, and mm. they're just fantastic. I'm so completely taken by the ethos of the band and their humour and their style and their experimentalism and I feel like it's something that's so different but it's something that really really works for me it's almost like perfect like it's literally the song for you yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh um I was I guess it's been mentioned before but uh proud like that was a song that just stood out for me for the first version Maybe because I just I was just going to see uh, Captain Marvel like the day the music video dropped, but I, I from first was like it just had it just it, I mean I didn't know what to describe it, it was just perfect. Oh, I mean, like literally North Macedonia did so well, and I really just hope that like now going on like North Macedonia knows what they're doing and like takes it slow, doesn't completely mess up. The staging because we're looking at you north macedonia we're looking at you mary popova that's a personal call out <laughs> to the head of delegation um but yeah honestly that was uh, when she like did so well in the jury vote i was like shocked and i was so happy for her it was just a shame that like she just didn't get to have her moment like at the last minute between her and duncan like oh such a shame <laughs> such a shame uh... You, there's a funny story about that when I was at uh, the jury vote. I was in the I was inside the hall when they were giving out the votes, and out of everyone at the back, I was the only one with the North Macedonian flag. So imagine Tim, who really liked Tamara's entry, and every time she's getting a twelve point, just cheering along, and everyone was just looking at me, and I was just like. Y'all <laughs> slept on this. Let me have my moment. <laughs> Don't you dare judge me because I I was the one who stuck my neck out and wanted her to win. Tell them. Raise your voice and say it loudly. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, y'all can judge me. I do not give. Uh, yeah. And I was so happy when she nearly won. I was like, okay. And then, I found out a few, and then when I found out a few days, I was like, what? She won the jury vote? Oh, uh, history in the like, making. It, it, just, yeah. it was just so nice to see after so many years of heartbreak for Macedonia. Because I feel like they had songs that were really high quality, but there were like aspects that just missed the mark. Yeah. And then it all kind of like came to a head at the end of the decade. And I just thought it was really, really sweet. And I was just so happy for Tamara. I was so happy for North Macedonia. And I, I, I can't think of anybody in the fandom who wasn't. Like, it was just a moment that we all deserved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think as well, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe she was the first winner of the jury vote that was from Eastern Europe from since, like, its introduction in 2009. Uh -huh. So that in itself Aww. is, like big like news you know shows that there's no such thing as a western bias now mm -hmm. um yeah so my number one it has technically been uh brought up <laughs> and it is uh zala gashper and uh sebi from slovenia now i know tim doesn't like him of course of but, course of course but <laughs> like literally this is the sort of music that i would just listen to like outside of a eurovision context like it's just so chill it's just like it's exactly what you need just to sort of just like take a minute take a breather and i might have said th this um before on the podcast but my sort of go-to sort of song is always the sort of one that you can always just like put some good headphones in and like just listen to it in the middle of the night where there's like no cars going along the road and you can just sort of just like just be at one with yourself and like that is like the exact sort of song for me and it just does it so well and i just don't understand why people slept on it so much you know and i don't know i mean i'm ready for the hate tim but <laughs> no I'm gonna be I'm gonna be neutral here and respect people's opinions. <laughs> That's until we stop recording. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I posted 
my opinion on Sebi. I have basically, like, I basically said it's not the, like, I don't dislike it and I don't hate it. Yeah. But I don't get the hype at the same time. Like, it's kind of a song that's just there for me. Mm. Mm. It's like, a, it's a take or leave song. Well, let's... Um, Let's remember that um, out of the two songs that were in the super final, I do believe Sebi did def- would have definitely done better than Chaos. Cows, cows, cows. <laughs> no, that's how annoying. Oh my god! Oh, oh, cows. remember what Leah's reaction was when Cows didn't win? Oh yeah, and she was like, <laughs> "What? What?" Because <laughs> she was fully expecting no. Raven to go, and then no. <laughs> that was so funny. Cows though, like. I know everybody loves Raven, but Cows is probably one of the most annoying songs I've ever heard in my life. Well, it's all right <laughs> now because Raven said she's never coming back to Ama again. So, you know, Slovenia well. Slovenia knows what she what they need to do if they want to be like somewhat progressive and not send Omar Naber again. Um, <laughs> and just send send Raven because God knows she fucking deserves it at this point, you know. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, like, kind of, what for you is, like, the sort of main sort of memory that you'll always have from 2019, like, as a year? In what sense? Like, in a Eurovision sense. As in, like, what, like, what's the one thing that you'll always remember from Eurovision 2019? And, um, I'm sorry to just be a little bit, um, selfish here, just a tiny bit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 2019 was the first year where I covered the event as press as uh with ESEX so I just plugging it down there. Oh, <laughs> um shameless. Uh but yes. Israel treated us with such great hospitality. I got to meet most of the deleg most of the artists on the ground and managed to interview them and the fact that even though I was tired, I was happy and content with the content I've produced for the site and if you guys get a chance check it out and i hope that you know everything goes back to normal 2021 and and would be a and as you know fan sites were able to bring you the best coverage for the listeners and the viewers alike well that's what we're going to try to do next year fingers crossed if we get the press pass I got a, a bit, like, I say that my favourite, like, experience was just being in the Euro Club. Um, because while I wasn't in the press, I did get to go into the Euro Club and I got to, like, meet people from the press, got to meet, like, the acts. And it was just a really surreal experience, but it was really fun at the same time. Although, I wish I'd had a little bit more confidence to go, literally, just, like, say hi to an act. But I thought, they're having a drink, they're busy, I don't want to disturb them. Uh, I didn't. Jazzy, just come <laughs> find me next time. <laughs> uh, I don't but... feel like I have quite the same memories because this was so 2019 was sort of my first year really amongst the Twitter fandom and things like that. But I wasn't at any events or anything like that. And I wasn't watching most of the national finals, though I will say Kinky Boots was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> That's Samson, if you're listening to this, better. please come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did host um, my sort of usual Eurovision party, ended up having my partner throw up all over his slippers, <laughs> miss <laughs> the voting, and go to bed and woke up halfway through the night and turned to me and goes, who won? And then he <laughs> straight back to sleep again. <laughs> so here to shame him um but my sort of main takeaway and actually i've already said it i think and it's that smile that kate miller heike gives once she's finished singing i go back in my mind to that shot every so often and sometimes i just rewatch the performance and get emotional and cry a bit because it's the most beautiful thing i have ever seen and it's just You can't not look at it and be happy. So that is my biggest memory of of the night. It just yeah. I'm 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 having a bit of a cry. Oh virtual hug. Virtual hug, virtual hug. (laughs) We're doing hashtag hugs for hugs for T E P. Hugs for tap. Hugs hugs for tap. (laughs) 
<laughs> Hugs for the Euro fandom. Oh, yes. yeah. Uh, it, was my, it was my first year watching the semifinals, so definitely, like, Nether's open performance. Just, like, just have a perform toy and just having the, um, the arena just, like, go insane. Like, just, I just get goosebumps thinking about it. It's definitely, like, the moment that, like, committed me to being a Euro fan. Aww. Oh, I, th- I always love that. You know, like when you've like you've just started to introduce someone to like Eurovision, and then they're like, "Oh my god, what is this?" I think that like you never get that same feeling ever again. So it's like you know, keep a hold of that memory because it's so like, oh, you know. But, uh... it, it, this is gonna sound really weird, but I feel like if twenty nineteen had been cancelled, I'd have been so much more crushed than I was this year mm-hmm. I feel like I developed like real emotional attachments to these acts to these songs and it's like if it had been cancelled and taken away I don't know what I'd have done thank god we managed to have you know only 2020 happen then because <laughs> I don't think we could have dealt with it like a whole like depressed fandom this is not what we need in our lives <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 2019 was, like, the most, like, the most I travelled for Eurovision. And I really love that. And I wish I could have a 2019 part two. So, you know, Israel, make sure that Eden's song in 2021 is great, that we can go back to Tel Aviv in 2022. Thank you. Well, hopefully Tel Aviv. Hopefully. It, oh. it will be. It will be, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> And like they're just gonna have Nadav on stage again, going before I <laughs> let me show you Tel Aviv again. <laughs> 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 or how about imagine like Netta would be on stage and it'd be like, "See you in XXX." <laughs> let's, let's see you in Haifa, and then we find out. Oh wait, no, it's in like Isla or something, or something <laughs> like snow. Um, yeah, so. I'm going to I'm going to have to do a bit of a cop out and I have to pick two memories. But so the first one is um it's during the selection period because similar to Rosie, I I, I still hadn't had gone to any sort of like pre parties or like any sort of Eurovision events. So I still was very much so, thought I was in my own little bubble, kind of. So I started um sort of watching the national selections uh in the midst of sort of January, February time. And uh, I started getting a few of my uh, university friends into watching it as well. And they'd come over every single week and we'd watch um, like different selections and we'd listen to them. We'd think, oh, that's a good song. Oh, yeah, that's a good song. Too. Oh, I don't like that one. And I think that was like a really lovely memory for me because I never really thought that, you know, Eurovision, like they would ever really care about Eurovision, especially because, you know, they're in, they're from the UK. They have a pretty terrible idea of what Europe is anyway, you know? Um, and then the other one is during the final, because during the final, I have, I've said it a few times on this podcast, I have a bit of a house party whereby I invite loads of people around and, uh, you know, we have drinking games. And then when it comes to during the voting, you get a country. And if that country gets 12 points, then you have to do a shot of vodka or any sort of alcoholic drink responsible drinking obviously you know um because <laughs> you know this is a very family friendly podcast uh <laughs> but um it's it's always something that you never want to have like have the winner with and i just simply remember uh two of my friends having to go back and forth because they ha- one of them had italy and the other one had north macedonia and then oh. they were going back and forth having the shots. And then by the end of the night, I just simply remember about four or five people in my bathroom just throwing up simultaneously. <laughs> like, let's just say you, no one wanted to go into that bathroom for the next two days. Like, that's the, the that's legitimately how it was. <laughs> so that's the, like, they're the, like the two memories that I'll always have for Eurovision 2019, because... You know, I, I started what, like, I was managed to get so many people involved in it. And it's gotten to now to the point where literally in this upcoming season, and hopefully with all the national selections, I'm having, like, two or three people come over to my new house. And if any of you are ever in Manchester, including Andrew, if you ever make it over to the UK and you're ever in Manchester, you <laughs> feel free to come over. We'll watch national selections together. <laughs> 
but um, awesome. yeah but um yeah so kind of like any sort of like final points on uh 2019 as a year i really love assy like who wouldn't love him who doesn't yeah um Icon. he's it's... the epiphany of a eurovision fan who basically had his dream come true and even gets to host the show i mean for crying out loud he even met his idol Mad- so <laughs> like <laughs> that's doing you something. Know, yeah so if if Israel does host again, please do not forget about RC because he was really good to us Eurovision fans. And he embodies the spirit of the contest and carries the weight for the fans because he knows he knows what we want and he understands us. It if there's a seven there will be a seventieth Eurovision special in twenty twenty six or something. <laughs> I want Petra and Assi to host it. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh I'd like that. Oh, with, I would with, happily get a ticket for that. With um, Anka Engelke and Philomena Cartella in the green room. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Can we have Conchita in the green room too? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Let's just chuck everyone in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that takes us to the end of this episode of That Eurovision Podcast. I'd really love to thank Rosie, Jazzy, Andrew and Tim for coming along. Thank you so much, Andrew, for joining us on the podcast. I really hope you had a fantastic time. I definitely did. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining thank us. It's, we've, we've loved having you on. And yeah, so, you know, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be carrying on with our country perspectives. We have a few surprises along the way. Hopefully nothing too controversial, but can't make any promises. And yeah, so in the meantime, please do continue to follow us on all of our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at That Euro Podcast. We're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. So make sure you get notified there or make sure you get make sure you follow us there so you always get notified whenever a new episode comes out. And uh, yeah, so shall we all say goodbye? Bye! Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.